Welcome back to part 11 of my milling machine build. Uh, if you missed part 10, there's a link up there now. You can go watch it before this one. And I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers who helped me to reach 500 just recently. I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. Uh, in the last episode, I decided that I was just wasting my time trying to mill flat the uh, top of the table and that it would need to be straightened with a big press. So while I'm trying to track down a big press to do that, uh, I'm going to get on with some other things. Uh, I mentioned in previous video that I want to cast up a couple of things. So what I want to make is a, a larger hand wheel for the Z-axis, uh, the micrometer ring for the Z-axis, and a little part that got broken, the plastic part that broke on my drill press a while back that needs replacing. So I'll cast that up rather than trying to machine it out of, uh, out of a you know, square piece or something. So we'll get on with all that. And, uh, First up, I want to make a bigger version of this, and I actually want to cast in these ribs, so it'll be pretty much like that, but 140 millimeters round. This is only, it's only 90, this one, so you don't get a lot of leverage on that, 95. So I want to make one that's 140 mil round, which won't interfere with the uh, y-axis handle, and cast it up like this, with the ribs up and the center piece in here. So that's going to take a bit of... Uh, gluing together, cutting up bits and pieces and glue it all together, so that's what I'm going to do. This is the part off the drill press that, uh, that broke, and as you can see it probably a lot easier just to cast something up this, this shape than it would be to machine it all up out of a piece of square. So I'll, once again I'll, uh, I'll make a round piece with a hole in the centre, then I'll glue a little square piece on the side and another piece on the side here and we'll cast that up and then I can just I really only, I, the only thing I really need to machine is the inside of it and cut it that's all I have to do with it so we'll get on with those okay after a little bit of uh, piss farting around I've got this one made up which is the uh, that one I didn't cut the hole in the center yet but uh, I'll worry about that later this one being glued back together, but these two, three parts here being glued together, I took the weight off top, but they'll sit across there. And once, once that one's dry, uh, I'll work out just where it has to sit to get it as centered as I can, and then I'll glue it on there as well, and then shape it up some more. And as I suggested uh, previously, I want to try and find some of that, of that polyfiller. Uh, type stuff. I think it's a uh, polymer or something like that, but I'm pretty sure that stuff will burn away. And I'm going to put a, a light coating on all of these shitty surfaces of this low density foam and give it a light sand to try and make sure I end up with a pretty decent looking finish so that any surface that doesn't need to be machined doesn't have to be to make it look half decent. But anyway, it's shopping day today, so I, that's why I wanted to get these bits made up because I'm only using uh, PVA glue to to glue these things together, so latex glue works pretty well, but it just takes forever to dry, that's all. So while I'm out doing the shopping, hopefully this stuff will get all dried, and uh, when I come back, I'll be able to finish these off. I'll finish gluing them back together anyway. Alrighty, so uh, I've been out and I've tracked down some of this acrylic wall putty, and I've been over this and put a very rough coat uh, around the top here, around there, around the outside. Uh, not hard to bloody put this on, well it's hard to put it on nice even coats and then you might get daggy bits on it but we'll sand all that off. This is the one for the micrometer ring, I've just put some around the top, around the outside and I'll put some on the bottom when, I, when all that one's dry. If it comes out the way I suspect it comes out, uh, then it'll be well worth it because I should have nice smooth finishes that just don't need anything doing to them except maybe polish them up a little bit. Well viewers, this hasn't been the raging success that I hoped it would be. Uh, the biggest problem is that this stuff is so soft and so flimsy and flexible that while you're trying to sand it, it starts to move and then it cracks. You can probably see the crack in there. It cracks and carries on. Now these two I'm not particularly worried about and I'll use those. Uh, but this one I've spent so long sanding all this up but it just keeps breaking chunks out of around in places like this. And, and over here, I just, I just, I'm not happy with it. So 
So this morning, instead of this garbage I was using, I've been out, and it's not really what I wanted, but I've tracked down some much higher density foam. It's um, quite solid. You can, you, can, you can feel it in the weight. It's, it's uh, and this piece here probably weighs, you know, if it was the same size as that, it would weigh twice as much. It's that, that much more dense. So I'm going to make a new one of these, and uh, out of this stuff, we'll start again on that one. Well, viewers, I wish I'd found this stuff up first go. This stuff's beautiful. Um, it's dense enough that you can actually sand it. So you can see it here, hopefully, that uh, what sort of surface I got there versus what it looked like originally. Uh, Got to be careful with it. You can break a piece out if you're not careful. I broke a little bit out there, but I'll put a bit of that putty in that one, a little bit just in this one here. But uh, outside of that, that's, that's pretty much right to go. And just to uh, make things better, this stuff, because it's more dense, doesn't disappear as soon as you hit it with a bit of hot glue. So I've actually hot glued all this one together and it's, uh, it's much stronger, much stiffer. So I'm much happier with that one. So uh, that one's a goer. And uh, this, this riser or sprue, whatever they call it, if you remember the first one, the aluminium disappeared down the hole that fast I had trouble keeping up with it. And I believe it's because uh, I had the sprue too big and it burns it away too fast. And then it flows too fast. So uh, I've reduced it now to a smaller one. My only real concern is whether or not uh, I can get it to flow into these two sides before it starts to solidify. And I'm wondering if I should put some uh, risers on here to help the, the air and everything escape. But anyway, we'll see. I called in at a uh, big scrap dealer that I buy bits of steel off from time to time. Uh, in fact, that plate there and some of the stuff under here came from him. And he told me any and deals in steel. And I was looking to buy some aluminium. And then uh, I thought, well, I'll go back and see the guy that replaced the master cylinder and slave cylinder on, on my Triton and see what he's got. And he came up with these five items. I'm really happy about that. For the princely sum of eight Australian dollars. I don't know what there's in US dollars. It's about five or six US dollars. I'm going to work on the theory that they're already cast aluminium. So it should be a decent quality casting material. And we'll just work from there. We'll just strip all the uh, plastic bits and steel bolts and anything else that's in it out of them and melt them down like I did with the last one. Alrighty, just a quickie viewers. Uh, if you want to go down the path of using these used car parts, when you strip these things down, make sure you get that little brass insert out of there. Uh, quite often aluminium wheel cylinders have them in there as well. So keep an eye out for them. The easiest way to get them out is just stick a drill in there and drill them out. Alrighty viewers, uh, just set myself up ready to uh, pour these tomorrow if I've got some decent weather. And I bloody ran out of sand, so I've had to go down the road and get another bag. After all that rain yesterday, it's ringing wet, so I've got it over there at the moment trying to dry it in the late afternoon sun. Uh, you'll see these two here, I mentioned previously, uh, I wasn't sure what I should do about putting some vents in it. So these two straws are just glued straight into the centre parts of where I was worried about it reaching. Glued straight onto the top, so if I see any aluminium come up these, I'll know that it's reached it okay. And it should vent, get all the gases and stuff out and stop it from compressing and not wanting to fill it up. Uh, this one, I've got both of those other two bits, the micrometer dial and the piece for the drill press in there. Uh, toyed with the idea of two and of one, and then I saw a video in the last couple of days of a guy pouring multiple uh, pieces into a single container, up to four pieces. So I thought I'll have a crack at that, rather than having make too many buckets and uh, those master cylinders might not look like much but that container is pretty much full of those master cylinders all chopped up so I have plenty of material that's the uh, sprue off the last successful one a few other little bits and pieces I'll throw in there just for good measure so hopefully that that stuff will dry out get me get this finished ready for tomorrow morning and hopefully the sun will be out and I can pour it all
I have a feeling that my, my big one is a fail, but we'll, we'll see. All right, the moment of truth. Well, this one certainly came out all right. Well, it's still got all these shitty marks on it, so the uh, that uh, acrylic coating didn't do it any good. That doesn't matter. This thing doesn't matter. It's going to get machined anyway. Yeah, it just... Uh, it just acted like the uh, plaster and it's just fallen off. There it is there, I think. But anyway, funny looking the way the sprue, oh, this is the one that was running out of uh, alloy, but that'll do the job, I hope. Damn near flooded the backyard when I was filling this up. I went out the front to do something, came back, the hose had fallen out. Alrighty, what's gonna happen with this big bugger? He's sawed. Pretty damn hot though. Nah, he's a fail. Got as far as the sprue, and that's it. A dead set fail. Although, maybe that means that I won't have to remake the uh, pattern, just put a bigger, heavier sprue on it. Well, made a dent inside there, but I might be able to rescue this. But anyway, that's a disappointment. But anyway, we'll go again. Well, viewers, I don't know about you, but I have always learnt far more from my mistakes than I ever made from people telling me what to do. Uh, there's a couple of odd things going on in here. Uh, there was sand down in the cavity where, uh, where the molten metal had made it to. You can see it there stuck to the glue. I'm going to cut this piece right out. Uh, before we go too much further but this is the plan uh, I'm drawing, I sort of drew it up to show you what I'm going to do so currently that's the setup so it's got the the, uh, the two cross members uh, spokes whatever you want to call them in here and a riser with the centerpiece so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some feed tubes that feed the, uh, the material down into this section here. So this is this is what it'll look like. Oh, that's that's it there currently. If you can't see it properly, and this is what I'm going to do with it. So this is the the two current uh, uh, spokes. I'm going to replace that feed tube with the really low density stuff to make sure that it, it burns it out quickly and gets down here and doesn't start to cool down because I, I think it, that higher density stuff takes longer to burn out. So I'll use the low density stuff here in the sprue and in here, all right, so it'll burn that out quickly and get down to where it needs to be filling it up. So uh, I'll be feeding it from at the top and then across these two here and then also down here into these larger side sections. So hopefully that'll work. Alrighty, there it is. Not quite what I drew, but uh, everything that needs to burn out quickly and get that damn stuff down to where it needs to be is this low density rubbish. So all of this, uh, that piece of glue in there is the high density stuff. But hopefully this will do the job. So I'm just waiting for that glue to, uh, to dry up properly. So I've used the hot glue even though it tends to burn this stuff away like you wouldn't believe. Uh, so I'll just wait for that glue to dry up a little bit and then I'll get a coat of plaster and out in the sun and hopefully I'll get another crack at this tomorrow morning. Alrighty so uh, it's taken a bit longer to melt this today because of the bigger thicker chunks so I've let it run a bit longer and uh, hopefully it'll be as hot as it needs to be to pour this so I'll go and do the pour now.
Oh, I was going to re-pour the uh, micrometer dial, but I used up everything I had in there to pour that one. And anyway, let's uh, wait till it cools down and uh, see how it goes. Well, once again, we've arrived at the moment of truth. There's something kind of weird here on the top. There's uh, lots of what looks like crappy slag and flaky bits and uh, and even even maybe some plaster or something. But anyway, we'll tip it out and have a look. It's still pretty hot. Well, that's a hopeful sign. Woo! Bloody who! Look at that! Oh, I'm in love. We have a winner. We have an absolute winner. Well, you live and learn, and uh, those two feeder tubes did exactly what I wanted them to do fed everything down in there and you can see the uh, the surface finish on here is, is bloody fantastic shame I'm gonna have to destroy it a bit in here cutting these off alrighty so we have a winner well viewers I'd actually finished uh, editing this video and got it ready for publishing and I decided to attempt casting the uh, micrometer ring again so this is the second attempt and a total fail but I decided I wanted to add this in for educational purpose now it's confirmed what I thought this heavier density foam does not burn away fast enough it's obviously gotten all the way down into here and started to cool there is the casing from the uh, from the bit of the bottom which is a good 50 mil two inches around by about 25 mil an inch thick it's, it's been hot enough, this bit here was hot enough to burn that all away without actually filling it up. So it just stopped flowing. So there's a valuable lesson learned. These uh, master cylinders certainly machine nice. Now, I'm just going to make sure one side, this thing has a uh, recess machined into it, so I've got to make sure I get the right side. And this is the side it gets machined into. Anyway, we'll get on with this and uh, I'll bring you back a little later. Alrighty, so I've poured it out to uh, 40 millimeters, which is the size of the ring on the spindle where it has to clamp. Now I've got to put a 5 millimeter deep recess, 45 mil round in it. That'll do mate. Alrighty, so that's that side done. Oh, I think that'll do me. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than it was, the, the other one. But I don't want to break it off anytime soon it's a long time since i had a stop on the drill press and i'm looking forward to be able to set one again uh, so all i really need to do now is uh, sort these uh, cut a piece off the end here sort this one out cut a bit off that and do that in the bandsaw and i'll just dress it up a bit uh, with the belt sander and a file maybe and we'll be done This stuff is going everywhere. I don't know if you can hear old mate's music playing over I did. Oh, I think that might do us a little, little bit in there, but that'll do. Keep that. Thing.
Chasing this bit of rubbish here. Ah, how much deeper is it? Oh, very deep. Not going to get rid of that, so I'll just have to uh, call it quits on that. Stop chasing it. Alrighty, that'll have to do. So I'll uh, go and cut this off. It has to be trimmed back to about there in the end anyway, so uh, that'll do for today. We'll come back and do some more tomorrow. It's too noisy this afternoon. Alrighty, new day, new things to finish off. Uh, at this point in the video, if you've been enjoying this and uh, possibly like me, learn something along the way, how about giving it a great big thumbs up, smashing that like button. Anyway, uh, I've done a bit of clean up work on this side this morning, just to, because uh, this video is getting a little long, so I'll keep on with this. I'm hoping that was a final pass over that. Yeah, that corner, I'm right in that corner, and I'm right into that corner. Oh, I'm getting close. One more pass. Well, at this point, uh, I have a slight dilemma. I'm going to take a couple more passes in there, it's a bit crappy there still. Uh, I'd like to thin this down a bit. I don't really want to turn it all in the swarf because uh, then I can't reuse it. But if I try and part that off, I've got half a chance of tearing it out of there and breaking it, which I obviously don't want to do. Bring you back later when I've figured out what I want to do. Obvious. Halfway through that, I was asking myself, shit, is it really worth all that work just to save that much material so you can recast it later? Um, I used parting tool but it wouldn't get all the way through and he got uh, ooh, maybe two thirds of the way through and I turned it around so it was, uh, was back up in here not out there and then the rest of it with axle oh. anyway I'll get in and finish this off well there we go that's it for this side um, I'll just run a bit of wet and dry over it but uh, it's pretty much done Got a little inclusion here, which is a shame. Pity it's not uh, 10 millimetres over here. Could have covered it up with a handle. But anyway, that's life. Shit happens. All right, so now I've got to turn around the other side and sort out the other one, the other half of it, and uh, and then that will be finished. All right, viewers. Uh, I didn't bother uh, didn't bother video on that. What I've done there is I've bought it out to 12 millimetres and then 15 millimetres, which is what, it, what the shaft is over there and there's a six mil hole up inside there for the little nut that holds it all together. I've decided that uh, I'm not going to do anything with this just at the moment. I'll wait until the mill's the table's fixed and it's all back up and running then I'll take this back off and run a mill across here and across those flats there on this, either side of that to clean all that up because it won't stop it from uh, functioning in the meantime. And another little change of mind was I've decided I'm going to I was going to shorten that right up but I've decided I'll machine the micrometer wheel to run on the outside of that. So get out of there and we'll go try it on the shaft. Well, there you go. Um, definitely got more uh, leverage on that than before. It's much easier to turn. Uh, I could go to the trouble of drilling and tapping it, put the handle on there. But I'm sure you've seen holes drilled and tapped before. So I think we might call that done for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. Bye bye.